Welcome back to the Fixed Ops Roundtable, and it is a great time to be in the parts business, and there is nobody better to talk about that than Revolution Parts, and today we are honored to have both Revolution Parts and some of their best dealers. I want to welcome Mike Rich, who is the Vice President of Marketing. Uh, Mike, welcome back to the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Hey, Ted. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Uh, excited to have you. And uh, Mike, if you wouldn't mind, introduce the two gentlemen who are on the screen. I know uh, they are both new to me and to the roundtable, but uh, they're not new to Revolution Parts. Yeah, so uh, we uh, have two great guys here, two of our most successful uh, dealers, uh, Scott from uh, Modern Auto Group and Justin from uh, All Star CDJR. Uh, two of our recent awards winners for our annual Parts Excellent Awards. So it's an award program we actually started two years ago as a way to kind of put some light on dealers parts department and all the amazing things, you know, the parts department's doing uh, to help out the dealership. And uh, both these gentlemen are uh, two time winners of the awards. They're, you know, they're uh, experts in their area and uh, a wealth of knowledge when it comes to selling parts. Well, congratulations to both of you. And Justin, give us a little background. To tell us a little bit about your organization, the lay of the land, where you're located, and so on, if you don't mind. We're located in Bristol, Missouri, which is just right outside the city limits of uh, St. Louis. Um, 105 employees, and uh, been in the business now for 42 years, and I've been here for, for the last 20. Wow. Excellent. Congratulations to you. And Scott, tell us a little bit about the, the Modern uh, Automotive Group. Yeah, so Modern Automotive Network, we're in uh, North Carolina. Um, we're a total of 16 stores, um, 10 different brands. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm the corporate parts director. I've been with Modern for 10 years. They've been, uh, they're, they're a fifth generation dealer now. So um, been at this for a long time, been in the parts business for, you know, from the beginning. Our owner actually started selling batteries out of the trunk of his car before he had a car dealership. So. Wow, that, that that is back to the beginning. Scott, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Modern. Um, uh, were you selling uh, uh, parts online uh, prior to Revolution Parts? And if so, you know what got you into that? We we got started right about the time uh, Revolution got started. So I, I think you know we we went on their platform about the time they came into into being. So uh, and that was a, a GM uh, site, a GM Wholesale Direct, um, and uh, that so that's our oldest site. Um, and over time, as we've acquired brands, we've just continued to add uh, add into that fold. We have a total of six six different uh, sites that um, the revolution runs for us. Wow! And Justin, can I ask you the same question? We got on about five years ago with Revolution Parts. It was actually an automotive news story that I that uh, that piqued my interest. They did a story about a, a dealer that was selling parts online, and before that, I never really even thought about it. And so I quickly realized. Okay, this is a great opportunity to get into a new selling channel that we hadn't been in before. And that's where I started looking around and quickly found Revolution as the partner to help help us get started. And I like the way you put it, a new selling channel, uh, because I believe that's exactly what uh, Revolution Parts there uh, does. Uh, what would you say is the biggest lesson or biggest thing you've learned uh, now from selling parts uh, online? I think for us uh, is, you know, we made a lot of mistakes in the beginning. We didn't staff it correctly. Um, we uh, we ultimately realized that our retail parts countermen and our wholesale team couldn't handle all of these orders, and they they simply didn't know what they were doing. And so we needed to start from the beginning and create new jobs that were just specifically tailored to handling these incoming orders and ultimately the in the team of picker packers to ship everything out in a timely manner as, as well. Wow. Uh, Mike, is, is Justin's story uh, uh, familiar? Have you seen that before? Yeah, no, we've seen it. We've seen people come on and uh, kind of get overwhelmed a little bit or, you know, grow a little bit too fast and not be ready. I think one of the things Justin actually called out before that that's really key, and you mentioned it, is it's a new selling channel. So this is a, a new business kind of line for many dealers and many parts departments. And it's a different way of thinking, right? So a lot of parts guys we talk to, you know, they come to us and they kind of have that, that old fashioned, like, I need to maintain, you know, uh, like a 30, 40, 50% profit margin. 
and you know i need to know where i'm selling selling online is different so you have different metrics that you have to like look at you have a different profit profile and there's a lot it's a new business you know so like the guys that come on and really get that piece are able to accelerate quickly and then they get to the staffing you know issues the the guys that come on and like you know try to run it like an ex like the business they have today then that's probably a struggle for them to kind of wrap their minds around like you know this is a new business how do i explain this line of business to my gm and position it so we can like look at the right kpis and define what success looks like on online channels wow scott i gotta come back to you with the same <clears throat> question uh biggest lesson you've learned from selling parts online uh, you know so we you, don't be don't be afraid to be a little uncomfortable i mean I'm, we're, we're uncomfortable every day as we go through this and uh, i think that's how that's how you grow and and you know to to what Mike was just saying, I mean, we we have evolved um, in the way that we handle e-commerce at Modern. Um, it used to be used to be done out at the stores at a store level by somebody in the parts department, and we've we've kind of taken on the model of consol consolidating our 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 uh, our online um, effort. Um, so we have we have a, a manager that manages that piece, and and two two uh, salespeople that handle all the customer service and. Um, part of the business and take care of the customers and fill those orders. And then, uh, you know, a, a warehouse that ships the parts. So um, it's not really done out at the, at the dealership level anymore. It's done more, more out of a warehousing kind of uh, setup. Wow. And Mike, would you say mind that different mindset that we're hearing uh, here and uh, you know, not be afraid to be uncomfortable. Uh, that's probably some of the things that uh, dealers who are looking to get into selling parts online need to be able to incorporate. Yeah, that's true, Ted. Yeah, you have to be a little bit uncomfortable. You have to be willing to, you know, think a little outside the box. Uh, we have a lot of different, a lot of dealers that do things a little bit different to like make themselves unique. I was talking to a dealer last week and I found it very interested. It was a Nissan dealer out in uh, Olympia, Washington, and they had a very unique business model for selling parts online. A lot of our dealers will sell parts by marketing through like organic uh, search or doing paid ads. These guys were doing YouTube videos and social so instagram and just videos and very focused on like nissan and specific part types and they were very successful and they were also really focused what i would say is a big important uh, part of selling parts online and a shift for some dealers is like the digital retailing aspect of selling online so think about it when you buy anything online like you want to be able to see great pictures you know multiple angles you want user-friendly descriptions and a lot of times that stuff doesn't come from the OEM, you know, great out the box. So you have to, you know, invest time in your digital retailing. It's something Revolution Parts tries to do to help our dealers is invest in digital retailing. But, it, it, you know, it's a new function for a lot of dealers. You know, how do I present these parts online, make them look the best? Which parts do I need to, you know, modify the descriptions, the images and all that type of stuff for? Justin, you mentioned uh, many years at the at the, at the group there. What Justin? What is your background? Was your was yours a fixed ops background, or did you come up, up to the sales department? Uh, fixed ops. Okay. Um, this is my father in law's dealership that I, I moved here from Texas to take over my father in law's dealership, and started in the body shop, and then went into the service department, and then the parts department, and then uh, finally made my way up front. But most of my time was spent into the back end of the store. And what Mike is saying here about, you know, some of the descriptions, you know, being able to have the visuals and the graphics, um, you know, what do you have to say about that? Because you're you're successful with this now. And is that an important part of being able to market this online? It's, it's key. We have a full time in person that all she does every day is take pictures of our parts. We have a photo studio set up for her. Um, and also updating the dimensions, the weights of the, the boxes and the descriptions themselves we for a while we spent a lot of time updating all of our descriptions and we could see the exact day when google rescanned our website and the sales took off once google recognized the work that we had put in and how our traffic our organic traffic skyrocketed after that day justin that is fascinating 
That's that's the first time I've heard this on the Fixed Ops Roundtable with all the discussions we've had. Um, Scott, what about on, on your side in terms of the marketing and the you know, you know the effort that going into uh, you know to describe uh, visually these parts online? Yeah, I mean when you when you have a catalog and it shows a schematic, that's not very appealing. And if and if if you're if you're if you're trying to market that against somebody that has a customized picture, as Justin was just saying. That, that customized picture is going to win every single time and it's going to, it's going to take the business. Wow. What's interesting too, Ted, a lot of times when you, you're going against a schematic or like sometimes the, the default will be just the brand, like the emblem, mm -hmm. like the guy with the cool picture or multiple pictures and even price higher a lot of times and win out over that guy with the schematic. Yep. You know, it really follows the Amazon model, right, Justin? And, you know, I'm thinking back, I'm dating myself, Scott, years ago to the old Sears catalog, but now how visually appealing everything looks online. And, uh, you know, Justin, we're really marketing ourselves in that in that new era. We are. And, and Amazon has set the bar. The customer expects, you know, that experience from us, just like what they receive from Amazon. Right. I think you're. I think you're right, and I think they they probably likely now expect that throughout the dealership, right? With a lot of uh, different things that are out there, the Carvanas and and so on and so forth. And it makes sense to have this in parts. Um, what about on the customer service side, Justin? Scott spoke a little bit about that, but how does customer service for online uh, parts differ from a traditional online service uh, model? It's it's very different. The number of emails, uh, the phone calls. And even for us, we used to have live chat on our website and we were receiving 3,600 live chat opportunities per month on our site and we simply couldn't get to them all. And we've had to transition to texting instead so that we then have the history, that phone number from the customer so that we can respond to them and no longer miss those opportunities. And we found that the customer typically wants us to you know, respond to them in the way that they initially responded to us, whether that was texting uh, a phone call or an email. And Justin, once once you uh, you know uh, acquire a customer on the part side through this way, uh, you know what's what's your experience been you know in retaining those customers and to keep them coming back? It's interesting. We we have a lot of customers spread throughout the United States now that just are our repeat customers that are buying parts from us on a monthly basis. Wow. Yeah, I'd say what's interesting, Ted, like if you look on Revolution Parts as a whole, like all of our customers and all of the purchases, about 50% of all purchases. So last year, I think there was about $500 million in parts sold through the platform. Half of that was repeat purchases. So someone bought something, came back and bought again. So it's one of the things when we talk to new dealers, like it's a new business and you have to build it. And as you start to build it and get a customer base and start getting repeat purchases, like you're then you're building a bigger and better business and your cost of acquisitions go down and then your profitability goes up. So, you know, you got to stick with it and build that base. Mike, you, you said another phrase there. You're building a bigger and better business. And Mike, it would seem to me that's what a dealership does when they get involved with this platform. It, it's true, Ted. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Yeah, to, to Mike and Justin's point, I mean, about 50, 52 percent of our business is either uh, direct or organic. So, you know, that that ad budget that we spend every single month, I want that going out and finding new business. And just like any other customer that comes into the dealership, we want to retain that, retain the one that that we got, you know, that the ad budget brought it brought to us, keep retain them and let that that uh, that money go find a new customer. Fascinating conversation, everybody, right now. We're talking to Mike Rich at Revolution Parts with some insights into online parts excellence with two of the top dealers in the nation, uh, J uh, Justin Aiken and Scott Probe. Uh Scott, let me come back to you. There are a lot of challenges right now uh, in our industry. Uh, we're seeing them in on you know both the variable and on the fixed side and i know in parts we've got some challenges in terms of supply and you know being able to fulfill the parts uh, how do you overcome some of those you you have to communicate i mean communication is the key with this business and you know supply chain has been been a challenge and i don't think it's going to stop being a challenge anytime soon so you have to be communicating with your customers setting real realistic expectations and etas and updating them when those etas change 
So for our, our e-commerce salespeople, we publish a, a, a back order list every single day of everything, everything that is, uh, that is currently on back order and up with updated ETAs. And so that they have that at their fingertips and they can then go through and update any customers with any changes that have taken place. So Scott, would you, would you say communication is easier, you know, you know, by having the, the online uh, selling uh, of parts with these customers than a, let's say a traditional experience? Yeah, I think there, I think that customer is more tuned in to the, what Justin said. However, they came to you is is the way we respond back to them, and and you, you usually make contact with them really quickly. Justin, I know you've got the challenges there in Missouri as well. You know, with the supply, uh, how do you overcome some of those uh, on the part side? The supply chain issue is yeah, it's it's getting worse. It's not it hasn't been getting better, and so now when orders come in for us that we can't fulfill, we're going into the back end of Revolution Parts and marking those items as being on back order and putting a date out in the future, so it gets pulled off of our site, and um, then I'm not wasting you know SEM budget on parts that I can't get our hands on, and I'm not spinning the wheels of my own employees. Um, and so we've seen our canceled order rate go down as we put that process into place. Fascinating. Uh, Mike, what do you want to share, if anything, on, uh, on supply issues uh, for dealers? Yeah, no, I think these guys covered it pretty well. I think everyone, you know, kind of realizes that there are supply chain issues. So it's not like something new to the consumer. So it's a little bit expected. So it is key to communicate uh, across, you know, these channels to these consumers. And it is also key to like, you know, eliminate, you know, that extra work, like Justin was saying. So if you have something that sells that's on back order and you know it's on back order and you can't get it, go in and update it and make that, you know, mark that product as unavailable so you don't get additional orders that you're trying to have to, you know, work through and handle additional communications and spending your time on. Wow. Scott, um, you're there at Modern Automotive in North Carolina. You and I got into the car business at about the same amount of time. Um, I could never have imagined, and I'm sure you could not have years ago, doing something like this. Even myself, 10 years ago, I couldn't imagine any mechanism like this. Uh, looking out into the future, because there's always going to be change. Scott, what are your biggest uh, what are your biggest concerns about how the industry is going to change over the next five or 10 years? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think there's lots of opportunity. I mean, the e-commerce business is going to continue to grow. We've seen tremendous growth over the last couple of years. You know, the pandemic certainly certainly helped help that growth a little bit, but it was it was well on a roll before that. Um, I, I think there's going to be level uh, opportunities to improve the customer experience as we move down the road. I, I think it won't be long before um there's going to be, we'll be filling orders probably not only out of our parts inventory, but maybe directly out of the manufacturer's PDC, um, which, you know, which will improve that, that level of service to the customer. Um, so I think that'll happen probably pretty soon, sooner rather than later. So if uh, Scott, if a dealer is not using a platform like Revolution Parts or the multiple platforms that they provide, uh, I would imagine they're at, at, they would be at a significant disadvantage if they didn't have that or didn't get started on that sometime in the very near future. Yeah, I, and I think just like traditional wholesale, over time, this business probably migrates to the bigger sellers. Um, so I, I think I think time is of the essence. If you have if you if you intend to be in this space, you need to you need to go. Wow. Justin, what are your what are your thoughts about how things are going to change in the next five, 10 years and, you know, getting on a platform like this? I believe I, I agree with what Scott said. Uh, you know, Google does reward longevity. <laughs> and so if you're going to get on the platform, the time to go. I think dealers across the country will at some point start questioning why their retail walk up counter uh, business, where it went. And uh, it, it went online and Scott and I are now selling parts to those to those customers because um, there's we see a lot of people who are obviously working on their vehicles over the weekend and they order their parts from us on Monday. Monday's our biggest selling day of the, of the week. And uh, so I, I think we have a tremendous opportunity just to continue to grow and actually get some uh, market share back from the aftermarkets. 
you know, good point that you mentioned, uh, Justin. Lizette Goal from Google was on the was on the roundtable and was showing us, you know, about some of the intentions of people who uh, companies who buy the parts. There are individuals who look at YouTube videos yeah. and then they are in the market, you know, quickly thereafter, you know, for parts as well. So, Justin, this is really changing rapidly the whole landscape like you just said of that walk-in customer you know buying those parts over the counter like in the old days yeah and, and one of the great things about selling online is we make money in shipping yeah that you know on the wholesale side of things it that there's an expense tied to that vehicle and that driver and the insurance and the gas and and shipping is a, a profit center yeah. for us another revenue stream wow so, uh, Scott, you couldn't imagine going back and not having, uh, uh, you know, these tools available like you're using today with Revolution Parts, could you? Not at all. Not not at all. Um, it's it's changed the way we do business. Um, you know, Justin men mentioned retail counter. I mean, we've watched our retail counter numbers slip, you know, over the last several years and they and they continue to go down. I don't feel too bad about it because I, I know where the business is going. Uh, and we're and we're getting a lion's share of it, and we're not limited to we're not limited to the dealership's footprint. We, I mean, we can sell anywhere in North America. Wow, Justin, could you imagine doing business today uh, and now going into 2023 without a platform like this? No, it's uh -huh. we've been able to you know hire more people, and uh, it's just brought a lot of uh, growth to our to our dealership. It's actually really been exciting to take something that didn't used to exist and grow it into you know what it is today mike i'm excited by listening to these two dealers and uh the success <laughs> they're having with uh, with parts yeah i know they're doing amazing and they're calling out a lot of opportunities like we're in a, a period of like transition and change right now you know in dealerships where that walk-up business is starting to erode and people are starting to buy online and i think just like the like the way the dealership looks not just the parts department's changing right so like the inventory dealers hold how they get customers like there's a lot of change occurring at the dealership right now and a lot of it is like going to like these e-commerce type models so to have your parts department be at the forefront of leading that change into e-commerce is very exciting, you know? So I don't know how often this has occurred in history where the parts department has kind of led the change, you know, for the dealership. It's probably, <laughs> probably one of the first times ever that the parts department's ahead of the rest of the dealership in terms of like embracing e-commerce and, and driving this change and taking back, you know, revenue from the aftermarket that has just like historically stole it from the dealership. True. And there's so much more opportunity. There's so many things, you know, we could do. I was on a, a, another call with NADA a few weeks back talking about EVs, and I thought it was really interesting. And we were talking about how uh, parts e-commerce can kind of help offset some of that loss in revenue from the service lane associated with EVs. Uh, one of the other things I thought was interesting, like that, that walk up parts business you're losing or that those oil change customers you're losing. Like if you have a, a good database of local parts buyers that are buying online from you, that could potentially be a funnel back to the top end of your dealership for people to buy cars. You could look and say, hey, we have all these guys and we know they have cars that are 12 plus years old. These are the parts that they're buying for these cars. Uh, these guys, <laughs> these cars are on their last leg. Uh, maybe it's time to take them and roll them into a, a campaign to try to get them back to the dealership and buying a car. So instead of spending money to buy a lead with your traditional you know, dealership marketing, you're actually getting a guy coming to you, buying a part, and then they're potentially becoming a lead for you to buy a car as well. So I think that's an area we haven't even touched on. This is easily one of the most exciting panels we have ever had at any fixed ops roundtable, and we are discussing insights into online parts excellence with Mike Rich from Revolution Parts uh, and two dealers, Justin Aiken and Scott Traub. Uh, gentlemen, to kind of bring it home today, uh, one last lightning round question, and Justin, I'll come to you first, and then Scott, and then Mike last. Um, what is the number one tip you would give our audience or anybody watching today who is thinking, thinking about selling parts online or just into something you and I discussed in the green room just before we got started, maybe somebody who initially put their toe in the water and got out and uh, is thinking about maybe getting back in. 
I think for that person that tip, dipped their toe in the water and got out, they probably didn't spend enough in uh, SEM. And that, that if you want to grow, that's where you need to start until you're able to build up the organic traffic to your, to your website, really. And just, and to me, you, you got to staff correctly from the get go and think outside the box, think differently than the, the staff that you probably have in your store right now. And bottom line for you there, it's been, uh, it's been overall a, a, a profitable and worthwhile experience. It has. It, it's allowed us to grow and hit a lot of our manufacturer objectives that they put out there for us. And they do. Uh, Scott, over to you. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, if you're thinking about getting in, into the business, I mean, you, if you're going to go this route, you got to go all in. You can't go halfway. You can't just give it a try. You, you got to have that mindset that that I'm going to I'm committed to this and I'm going to make it work. And I'm and I'm and I and I'm willing to make some mistakes and as I as I learn and go go through it. But I'm all I'm all in um, halfway in. You're going to fail uh, halfway in. You're going to get frustrated and, and give up. Um, but if you if you commit and you go all the way in, you'll you'll be successful. Uh, the guys at Revolution will hold your hand. They'll tell you the best practices. Listen to them, follow their lead and, and it'll work. Yeah, Scott, I guess I could try it uh, without them, but to have that experienced partner uh, in so many of these different ways uh, makes a lot of sense, Scott. Yep. Um, Mike, uh, number one tip you would give our audience watching today about somebody thinking about selling parts online. Yeah, I mean, these guys kind of covered it already. Uh, at the end of the day, just remember it's a new business. It's, you know, a new channel for you. Uh, you're not going to come out the gate in most instances and like have instant success. Stay with it, you know, put a plan in place, uh, build up a base of customers and grow with it. And, and just don't don't be afraid to, to you know, take the plunge and, and to start and, and get moving down the road to e-commerce. If, if you don't do it today, you know, five other people are going to do it. And eventually, you know, the market's going to consolidate and you might be left, you know, without a piece of this pie. Well, Mike, I'm going to ask you how our audience can reach out to you. But uh, Justin and Scott, I know our audience is going to reach out to you as well. Uh, so uh, be prepared for some feedback on there and, and all good stuff. Um, Mike, if our audience wants to find out more about Revolution Barts and how they can get started, well, what do they do? Yeah, best way is just you can email me directly. My email is uh, across the bottom of the ticker mrich at revolutionparts.com. So I'm pretty responsive. So just email me. I can help you in any way you need to get started, send you over to uh, any of our specialists, answer your questions. And yeah, just reach out if you have any questions. Always here to help. Well, love it. Everybody, on behalf of the Fixed Ops community, I want to thank you for your time today. Uh, Justin Aiken, welcome. Thank you so much. Great resource. A lot of insights today. And thank you for all you do for for fixed operations. Appreciate it, Justin. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And uh, Scott, uh, Scott Traub, thank you so much as well. I've heard a lot about both of you gentlemen and Scott, nice to meet you finally in person and uh, you to get too. you here on the round table. Thanks for having me. Yeah, great insights and great wisdom. And uh, Mike Rich, thank you uh, on behalf of the Fixed Ops Roundtable for all you do for our industry at Revolution Parts. Cool, thank you, Ted. Everybody, uh, easily one of the most exciting panels we've had on the roundtable in a long time. The Insights into Online Parts Excellence Panel, hosted by Revolution Parts, here today at the Fixed Ops Roundtable.